salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. The subject today is a humble servant. And we're going to be talking about what it means to be humble before the Lord and what it means to be humble before the people of God. And I, I think this message today is, is very thinny because a lot of times we, we as we get into the Thanksgiving and Christmas and into the holiday spirit, and I talk to you guys about gratitude and I talk to you about being thankful and, and, and all those different things. But humble is one of the main things that's, and that's part of it. It's, you know, to have a humble spirit and to be a humble servant. And we're going to be talking about where humble comes from and why it's important for us to be humble because Jesus himself was a humble servant. He was, yes, he, we look at Jesus when we hear his name, we think about him having all power and he, think about him being an angry God when we mess up and think about him being to control the seas and the waters and the rains and the storms and controlling this whole entire earth. And he created the he heaven and the earth. So when we think, when we listen to him, we hear the name Jesus, we like, woo, we begin to tremble and we begin to shake because we don't want to, we don't want to make Jesus mad. We don't want to make our creator, our father mad. But how many of you know Jesus? has a really sweet sign. He is so sweet that he gave his, God gave his only son, which is Jesus Christ, that he shed his blood for us and he took the pain of dying on the cross for us. So you know that there is another side to Jesus as the all-powerful, the almighty, the all-knowing all, all and ever-showing and more than and the delightful God and an angry God and a, and a just justice God, God of justice and honor. But he also is a humble servant. He, he sees, has a humble and a loving spirit. And as Jesus is humble, guess what? He requires us to be humble. And I know we hear that word a lot and, and we hear it a lot, but how many, a lot of people don't know what it is to be humble. A lot of people don't know what it is to have a humble spirit. So to, today's message is a humble servant. What is a humble servant? What does it require to be a humble servant? And where, where did the, what humbleness come from? Well, humble don't come from Jesus himself. As he was humble and he took the dying of the cross willingly, even though he had pain, even though he felt like he couldn't do it at times, but he did it humbly. He didn't do no complaining. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say, Lord, I don't want to do this no more. He was humble before the Lord because he understood the purpose. He understood what it took. He understood. And he was, he had so much love for us that he was willing to die on the cross for us for the love and because of the will of his father. I don't know anybody else that could display the humbleness of Jesus Christ more than Jesus himself has displayed. As he's, he's displayed his humbleness, his willing to serve, his willing to, to provide, his willing to, willingness to just do what it, what it took to, to just, to get the job done and didn't complain and didn't, and then he just was a humble servant. And I want to list two examples of what it is for Jesus to be humble. The first one is, Mark 10, verse number 45. For even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus Christ did not just come down here to, to, to give his life for us to just, yes, we, we are supposed to walk in his path, but he also knows what has the importance of to be ministered to. So yes, it's, it's good to give instructions and it's good to be a leader, but it's also good to take in instruction. And when we take in instruction, that allows us to be humble. And what do you mean by that? It means that we are servants. It means that we are, are servants to the Most High God. We are willing, we are supposed to be a willing vessel to take in the godly instruction that is given to us by our pastor, by our ministers, by our apostles, by, 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 by anybody, our parents, anybody that that's on this earth that can put the godly wisdom in, in, inside of you. We are supposed to be a humble servant and we are supposed to take in that godly instruction willingly. As Christ did the same thing for us. He didn't just come down and say, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. He didn't come down to just give orders, orders, orders. But he also came down so we, he can take in orders. His disciples, they, 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 he gave instruction to them, but he was always willing to ask them questions. What did they think? How did they believe? And you know, what was the best route to go? He likes to, he knows everything, but 
but he likes to hear it from us. He likes to know that we're listening. So he didn't just come to give out instructions. He also came to get instructions. He came to for us to talk to him, to sit down with him and have a relationship with him. So we look at Jesus as, as someone that's powerful, as someone that's almighty. And yes, he is. That's, we're not taking nothing back from that. But we, we also got to look at Jesus as a humble servant. Somebody that's willing to go down to where you're at, even at the lowest of lowest in your life, and they're willing to go down to where you're at. And you say, Molina, what did that mean? That means that, you know, as I travel and as I go out and I look at the people and, you know, I don't, when I get to them and they're got all things that's going on in their lives, I don't get to them and start judging them and say, well, why didn't you go this route? Or why did you do that? But I, I allow myself, my mind to think that it could have been me, that I could have been in this situation and I could have went on the wrong track. And you have to allow your mind to harbor yourself and say, Lord, you know, this could have been me. And we have to forgive people and we have to have compassion compassion for people. As Jesus has had for compassion, and he has forgiven us for the things that we have done, the routes that we have to, to taken. And he said, yeah, I want you to go left, and you chose to go right. And he said, I want you to go over here, and we didn't do it. And then we, all of a sudden we get to talking, and we get to say, well, you know what, if I had a did this, or if I had a did that, and God is saying, you win the route that you're supposed to take because I allowed you to be humble. I allowed you to appreciate what you didn't have, and now that you got it, and now you're saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, if you had to took me this route, I would have been, I, I would have been here right now. And that's what I see when I go out and I look at the people and I tell them, I said, you're blessed. You're here today. You, you're alive and well. You know who Jesus Christ is, and he requires you to have a humble heart, to be humble before him. And they are so appreciative. And they say, you know what? I'm still alive. I was on drugs, but I made it. I was an alcohol, but I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. Glory to God. I'm talking today about a humble servant. God requires us to be humble. You know, we don't eat the Bible says he can't stand the problem. Well, you know, I, I did this. This is because of me. I, I, I was the one that did this. I was the one that did that. We always saying, I. But when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't say nothing about I. He said, Lord, forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. I'm talking today of what it is God is requiring us. Yes, we ought to be grateful. Yes, we ought to be thankful. But we also ought to be humble before the Lord and say, Lord, it's not my will. But let your will be done. James 3 and 12. John 3, 13 and 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what have I have done to you. We are in John 13, 12. And he is at the upper room with his disciples. This is right before his foretelling of his death. And he's talking to his disciples. He said, ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. If then your Lord and master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he said, you know what? If you're not willing to go down to your brother or sister and give them a cup of sugar, if you know they're in need of, how is it that you can call me Lord? How is it that you can come and wash my feet, but you won't do it for your brother or your sister? I'm talking today about a humble servant. I'm talking today about somebody that's willing to wash the feet of Jesus, that's willing to wash the feet of their neighbor, that's willing to wash the feet of their brother and their sister. A humble servant. And he's explaining to them what it is to be humble. And you know, they're now shocked that Jesus is coming where they at. Jesus will meet you right where you are. And you say, well, man, I'm dirty, I'm nasty. I haven't, gave, I haven't confessed to be the Lord. The Lord is my Lord and Savior. So I'm dirty. I'm nasty. I'm not clean. And you mean to tell me God is willing to come where I'm at? Jesus said, I'm willing to come right where you are. If you're nasty, I'm willing to clean you up. Wherever you need me to go, wherever you need me to be, I'm willing to come right where you are. As we look, at the, at the definition 
revelation of a servant. It says to be devoted and a helpful follower, to be humble before God, to be ready to act as God nudges and inspires us to help meet the needs of other people. And to remember that it's not about money or about a reward. A humble servant don't care about what, 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 what they're going to give. And I, and, I, and I talk about this a lot in my day-to-day -day activities. And, and, you know, people say, well, you know, you do something for somebody. and say, well, let me do something for you. But you don't do something for somebody so they can do it for you. And I have to tell people that I run into, I say, I'm doing it because it's required of me to do it. I'm doing it because I'm a humble servant. And God requires of us to do it. We're not doing it for no specific thing. But we're doing it because God has required of us to do it. We ought to be humble before the Lord because he is humble before his father who is in heaven. I'm talking today about a humble servant, somebody that's doing something for others with no grudges, no complaining, and say, you know what? I'm willing to wash your feet. As Jesus has washed his disciples' feet, I'm willing to wash your feet. How many of you today, it is some when your friend is on a sick bed and they need you to go, they need to take them to the doctor and they need you to go left and right. What you doing today? Or would you complain and say, I'm so tired of her, I don't know what to do. Somebody that's been by you through your thick and thin. And God is asking you to do the same thing, not only for the people that we see every day, but God is also asking you to do this for him. How can you go to God for something every day, every day, and you're not willing to help others? And God is saying, I'm looking for somebody today that will worship me in spirit and truth and will be humble before the throne of grace and say, you know what? I let this pride go. I let this selfish attitude go. And I'm willing today to be a humble servant. I'm willing to be a, a servant that will, that will look out for others. There were black those that blessed me. But I won't curse nobody, but I'll forgive them. And I leave it up to Jesus to do it. How many days of Marlena? I'm willing to be a humble servant. I'm willing to go before my father and I'm willing to say, Lord, forgive me. Make me more like you. Humility means believing that God says about what God says about you over anyone else's opinion. Humility. You don't care about what somebody say about you, but the only person that matters is God. If God said you are, you are wonderfully, and, 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 and you're spiritually and wonderfully made, then, then you, need to, you, need to be, you need to believe what he's saying. If God calls you the head and not the tail, then you need to be the head and not the tail. You humble means you're not going to let the opinion of others dictate who you are. But at the same time, you're not going to let pride come in from people gossiping and, and building your head up and let pride come in and destroy the harmony that's in your spirit. And when you go before God and, and pray, he's not going to recognize you because you've been listening to the people instead of listening to him. I'm talking today about a humble spirit. To be biblically humble is to be so free of concern for your own ego that you unreservedly elevate those around you. You are humble. I don't know how many times we oh, I like this, I like this. And I'm like, I like yours too. You take the detention off of you and put it on somebody else. That's how you know you, you carry in a humble spirit. Yes, it's nice to get a compliment. Yes, it's nice for people to be nice to you. But sometimes, you know, nobody wants you to hear, well, I know, girl, I know I look good today. What kind of attitude is that? Harmony is this. The Bible said a pride ego, a pride comes before every fall. So this is saying biblically humble means that you don't let your ego get you big that you can't bring yourself down. Sometimes it's good to take a compliment and say thank you and keep on moving and just tell, tell somebody else, hey, you know what, I, I thank you and I, I, I like that too. Or I like you too. Or I like what you got on. I like your car. I like your shoes. I like this. But a lot of times we take a compliment and we don't even get another compliment back because our ego and, and, and we walk around and we say, mm, I know I look good. You, that's, that's, not the, that's not the humble this God wants us to be. Because that's not humble, that's pride. I'm talking today what it means to be a humble servant and I'm talking today what it means to, to put your, not put yourself before others. 
being nice, not because of a word or something you're going to get from somebody, but do it because of your heart. Do it because God has required of you to do. A humble servant, somebody that's willing without, without with no reward to go in and say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, that I will do it. You don't have to give me anything you already have done enough. I'm doing it because of who you are. If you can wash your disciples' feet, surely I can give and help the poor. If you can wash your disciples' feet, surely I can take a neighbor to the store when their car breaks down. If you can wash your disciples' feet, surely I can visit my friend that's in the hospital. We need to know what it is to be humble. We need to know what it is to help somebody and not always think about self all the time. Because when we think about self so much, guess what? When the time comes and we're going to need help and you're going to call on somebody. You're going to call on somebody and you won't get no answer. People remember how you treat them. People remember what you do to them. And most importantly, God remembers. Woo! He remembers how you treat people. I'm talking today of what it is to help somebody in need. What it means to God. He requires us to be humble. He requires us to be helpful. He requires us to not be selfish. It ain't about money all the time. You can be humble in a lot of different ways. But God does not require us to be prideful and selfish. Pride closes the door to spiritual growth. But humility opens the doors of your life to more grace from God. To be humble, God gives patience and peace and gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit grows in the soul of humility. Being humble opens up so many doors. I have seen this so much in my life. Just doing one thing, one act of kindness, treat somebody nice, and next thing you know, the following week, somebody has turned around and did the same thing to you. Being humble opens up a door for many blessings. People can't bless you when you got your heart, when you got the love in your heart closed. And like I said, it ain't about money. You can't be blessed when your hand is closed. That's true. But you can't be blessed when you don't have love for nobody. You, you can't be blessed when you don't have compassion for nobody. I've never seen a world that's so selfish in my life. And God has required us today to be humble, to be willing to help others. When you see somebody on the ground and they're passed out, I can't believe people that walk on by and see somebody passed out and need help. What have you learned from growing up in your days? What have your parents taught you? What have the word of God taught you? That we're supposed to love one another like Christ has loved us. Love your neighbors. Love your enemies. I'm talking today of what it is to be humble. And a lot of you out here saying, you know what? I'll do anything for anybody. I, I got a good heart. But, I, but God is testing you today. He's testing you today. Woo! A humble servant. Thank you, Jesus. It's the position of your heart to be open to his word. It's taking the focus out of yourself and focus on what really matters. God, come to the cross with a clear conscience, confess your sins to the Lord, and give up whatever's burdening you and be willing to leave it at the cross. Hop on this saying, you know what, it's not my will, Lord, but allow your will to be done. And that is something that is so hard for us to do. And we, you know, it, it, it's so hard for us to trust. It's so hard for us to, to talk about our problems because we don't want to feel embarrassed. We feel like we can't trust everybody. And that is so true. And I understand that. But you can go to God. And you, nobody's looking. Nobody can hear it. And you can go to God and confess your sins to him. Be humble before God. I don't care about the people of this world. Be humble before God. Confess your sins. He said he'd be faithful and just to forgive you. God is requiring us today to be humble. What it means to be humble in Jesus Christ. One, it means to retain a Christ-like relationship with God. To be humble, you come out of self. 
You come out of the flesh of this world and you say, you know what? I live for Jesus and him only. I'm going to follow his word. I'm going to follow what he requires of me to do. And I'm going to be humble. It's not about what my little Lewis want to do, but it's all about Jesus Christ. Being humble. Taking yourself out of Marlena and put, put Jesus in the place of I. It's having a relationship. A Christ-like relationship with Jesus Christ. And say, you know, it ain't going to be mine about what I want to do. My opinion. My this. I this. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm telling you people, you're going to pass right around, right along in this world, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. If you don't stop talking about I, 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 and start putting Jesus in everything. It's going to sneak up on you. It's no, it's, it's going to be too late. You put God first and you put God and others first to be humble. It's, like I said, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's nothing about you. You put him first. He's the reason that you live and you have your being. There's no other reason that you're here on this earth. The only reason you're still here is because of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. So you say, you know what? It's not all about Marlena Lewis, but it's all about him. Being humble means you put God first. He said, when, I, when you first wake up, it's, Lord, I thank you for a new day. I thank you for the activities of my limbs. You're the reason I live and I have my being. being. And you put him before everything, your family, your work. Humble means it, and it's all about Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be humble. And we cannot do that. And we're not, we can't live in a world that we focus more on Jesus Christ than ourselves. And guess what? We're going we're gonna to perish. The Bible says that the wicked will perish like the grass. We have to stop putting so much emphasis on self and put it on God. Because God is the one that created you. You listen to God and others. Being humble, you, you know, sometimes you just got to be quiet. And this is something that we all need help with. Sometimes we just got to be quiet. Humble doesn't mean, you know, what I ain't about what my opinion and about what I think and about what I want. You got you to gotta, you gotta sometimes say, I ain't right. I ain't right. I'm going to listen. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm willing to listen. And even to God. Stop going to God asking for everything. And go to him and say, Lord, I worship you in spirit and truth. Now I just, gonna, I just want to worship you. I just want to thank you for all the things you've done. I thank you for what you are doing. I thank you for being the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Humbleness means, you, you, it, it don't mean having a selfish attitude, but it's mean giving God the glory, taking everything out of you and giving him the glory. And part of that means, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen to what you say, Father. I'm going to listen to what your words tell me to do. I'm going to listen to how to treat people. I'm going to listen to how to be compassionate. I'm going to listen to how to be thoughtful, kind. I'm going to listen to what you have told me to do. You take time out to say thank you. And I know most of us pretty much do this, but humbleness means that I, I thank you. When you can tell somebody thank you, when you can tell... And, and just not walk away and don't even say thank you. That is a very selfish attitude. And I, I, I think most people do say thank you, but I, but it is important to be to not say thank you to others, but to, to tell God thank you. You didn't have to wake up this morning. It's because of the grace of God that you're here and you're breathing. You have your your being. You look on TV. Look at look at all the people that's dying in this world. And you think you're so, you, you did something so great that you still here? If you feel like that, you better change that attitude. And remember who, who created you and why you're still here today. And it's because of Jesus Christ. And you need to get up every day and say, Lord, I thank you. You're the reason I live and I have my being. Accepting feedback from God and others. We don't like discipline. We were growing up and got a whipping. Nobody wanted to get a whipping. And we didn't feel like we deserved to get a whipping. We were like, what do we do? But we got it and we and we had to take it, take it. Even though we didn't feel like we deserved it, but we, we but we got it. And just like our parents spanked us and whooped us, God disciplined us when we are disobedient. He causes things to happen in our lives. Not for nothing, but it's, it's to get closer to him. But when we when things go on in our life, all of a sudden we forget about God and we, we, we get mad at God. Like God can't chastise us. How is it we listen more to the people of this world than we do to God? 
If you go do something wrong when you go to jail, you got to accept the court's consequences for doing something wrong. The worldly system. And when we do something wrong and God takes away our children, he takes away things that we, that we love and desire. And the first one thing we do, we go to God and we say, why, Lord? Why'd you take this away from me? Why'd you do me like this? I've been good, Lord. Why would you do it to me? We, 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 we put more trust in the worldly system than the godly system. And what is the godly system? It's the word of God. I don't understand that. We'll listen to every rule that man says to do, but when God tells us to do, treat people right. Love your neighbor. Love your brother and sister. Help the poor. Help the needy. We don't want to do nothing that he says to do. And then when God disciplines us, now we go into the church and ask him for prayer. Something ain't wrong with that, people. Something is wrong with it. I'm talking today about being a humble servant and know what it is to face, to get discipline from God and be acceptable to it and say, Lord, forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I said about this person was going to come back to bite me in my butt. No, it's a message that nobody wants to hear, but it has to be told because we're sinking in a world of sin. And selfish pride. God requires us to be humble. Requires us to be prideful. Ask for help. You ain't on this journey by yourself. Why you feel like you can't ask nobody for nothing? When you go on your job, people, talk, people go on their job and talk more to their managers and talk to the God. And we say, well, I don't know why this is going on in my life. I don't know why this and why that, why that. And we go, we ask all kind of questions on our job. And we don't know how to do something. And as soon as something is going wrong in our life, instead of going to God, we get on the phone, talk to our best friend, we talk to our parents, we talk to everybody but God. And God is saying to be part of being humble and know when, it was, when you need to come to me and ask me for help, ask me for the answer. Why does stuff have to get so bad and we get so low that we don't, and then we find ourselves going to God and say, Lord, um, um, part of being a humble is be willing to ask questions. And, and this goes both ways, but I'm, I'm talking more spiritually, but I, it, it's like this on, in everyday life. We were so proud, but we won't even ask a question. Part of being humble is going to God and asking for an answer. But the pride that we have, that we don't, we don't want, we don't want to feel embarrassed, even though nobody listening to us. You know, you're in the room all by yourself, and we don't want to feel embarrassed, and, and we don't even want to ask for help. We don't want to seek God for an answer. And God is saying today that you know, come to Him, that He's willing to provide you the answer that you need. So I'm encouraging somebody today. This is not a word that's going to shout. This is not a word that's going to get you moving and shouting and jumping, but it's a word that is much needed because God is requiring his people to be humble before him, to seek him in everything, to be a humble servant. And this is something that I feel like we're, we're not this and we're not that because you know what? We're so selfish and we don't want to do nothing for nobody. We don't want to give nobody a dollar. We don't want to give nobody a ride to the store because it's going to cost me gas. We don't want to do nothing nobody for more information on today's spotlight church visit them on the internet and follow them on social media i'm renee johnson with the daily gospel network and until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.